Brother, welcome in this Sabbath afternoon. So please rise and let's open our youth program with hymn number 221. 221. Amazing grace. Kevin, okay, let's pray with Kevin. Sing a song, another song. Do you have any proposal? A song? Who has a song? Or 224. 224. So let's let's sing this song. 224.
So, uh, Jenny, you are here, and Yomis, you are here. So just stay here a little bit. I just to tell you a story for, for, for you, for Jenny. So how the story starts, once upon a time, right? So, there was a girl, and her mother tried to teach her to sing, to, to play piano. And her mother tells her, look, you have to sing perfect. And the, the girl said, look, nothing is perfect in this world. Who is this girl? It's, 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 it's her, yes. <laughs> She's the girl, yeah. So yes, nothing is perfect in this world, but only God is perfect, right? And God can make us perfect if we want. So uh, please, Jane, here with your friend, with Eunice. Uh, they have a song for us. children here in front for
Children obey their parents in all things, and that's well, and that's well, planned and informed. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. John 15, 12. My son, hear the instructions of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 1 8. Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods 
which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Ammonites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24:15. <coughs> He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalm 71, verse 11. Turn up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him.
Thank you so much. Next item is a presentation. So I would like to invite uh, Ina for the presentation. Good afternoon, happy Sabbath. The title of my presentation will be A Bible Model for Girls. You are loved, you are God's gift. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is your reward. Psalm 127 3. Can somebody tell me what's the fifth commandment? Oh, is that great? Jesus is your best friend and your savior. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19, 14. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified really by his grace through redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 23, 24. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. John 3, 7. Cherish the inner beauty. The beauty of the heart, or of the character, must be prized more than external beauty. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Proverbs 31, 30. Who is adorned, let it not be that proud toward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God and great Christ. 1 Peter 3, 3, 4. Do not conform to this world, be transformed. Romans 12, 2. And be not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Trust God in his word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Your body is God's temple. Take good care of your body and of your health. Your body is the exam is the temple of God. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Seek wisdom and talk wisely. Virtuous women seeks wisdom. She speaks wisely in this creation. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Proverbs 31, 26. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Proverbs 14, 1. Be teachable, diligent, and helpful. A Christian girl should learn useful skills, be industrious, help her family and those in need. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. She looks well to the ways of her household and is not either but of idleness. Proverbs 31, 26. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spinal. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Proverbs 11, 22. Let us briefly reflect on just a few great women of the Bible and learn from their virtues and accomplishments. Miriam was a caring sister, a poetess and prophetess. Miriam, the eldest child of Amram and Jochebed, the sister of Aaron and Moses, she acted as a caring and wise girl on the banks of the river Nile, providentially protecting the land of her younger brother. Miriam was also a gifted poetess and prophetess at the Red Sea. She led the congregation in a victorious song. Using her timbrel, she sang in Exodus 15, Sing ye to the Lord, for he had climbed gloriously. The horse of his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The Hebrew maid of Naaman's wife, herald of healing and salvation. She was the nameless capital maid who belonged to Israel. Forcibly taken by the Syrian army from a godly Hebrew home, she believed in the God of Israel and trusted God's prophet Elisha. With sympathy and love, she witnessed to her mistress, If only my master would with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. This great story about the little maid is told in 2 Kings 5. Ruth, a hard-working and devoted daughter-in-law. Even though Ruth wasn't an Israelite, but a Moabite, she remained loyal to her Israelite mother-in-law, Naomi. 
She followed Naomi back to her homeland and married Boaz, the next of kin, to continue the family line, <clears throat> to write for Naomi and ultimately become an ancestor of Jesus. Ruth's famous words to Naomi for his mother-in-law are, Entreat me not to leave you, for wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people should be my people, and your God, my God. <clears throat> Esther, a woman born for such a time as this. Esther was a young Hebrew orphan raised by her cousin Mordecai. She was selected as one of the beautiful virgins to become a queen of the Middle Persian king Ahasuerus. Esther proved to be a very brave girl. When Haman, a high-ranking court officer, resolved to destroy the entire Jewish nation, <coughs> Esther prayed and fasted together with her people. She made a decision to intervene with the king, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Through her, God saved the nation. Mary, a woman who gave birth and raised our Savior. We will mention only one young girl from the New Testament. This is Mary, the early mother of the Savior of the world. Mary was just a young girl when an angel appeared to her and told her she would bring the Messiah, Jesus, into the world. Yet she responded to this daunting task by praising God. Then she went about the task of praising him, even when it meant fleeing to Egypt to protect them. A woman should know her power for God. We may do a noble work for God if we will. A woman does not know her power for God. There is a higher purpose for a woman, a grander destiny. She should develop and cultivate her powers, for God can employ them in the great work of saving the souls of eternal ruin. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Inam, for your presentation. Uh, next item is a song. I would like to invite Anna from Oda to sing a song.
Thank you so much, Anam. I would like to invite here Brother Rado for an experience. Greet you all in the name of the Lord. And I'm so happy to see so many children with us. And there will be a kind of combination between an adult experience and a child experience. And uh, please uh, don't uh, uh, laugh on me uh, because I put all my heart in this uh, sharing of the experience. <coughs> it was not so happy the experience for me, but with a very nice happy end. The Bible says to all the children and to all of us that all things are working together for good. I don't know exactly in your translation, but more or less this is the idea of the verse. So, I was with my uh, family uh, enjoying a concert. Um, how do you call that? 25th of December Christmas, Christmas, Christmas concert of the, the school in which my, uh, my children were uh, yeah, studying at that time. They were small. And uh, we were looking for uh, uh, director for our choir and we were thinking we will see them directing uh, several choirs of the of the musical school and we'll choose one of them and invite him to to teach us to sing for uh, for our god and that was the evening very very interesting and uh, the children uh, played and sang, sang very nice about two hours and a half i don't know three hours I was standing because there was more people than the seats available in the Philharmonic of the city. And when everything was done, we left the place, then I had to uh, make some copies, some yeah, papers for my children. Then I, I found out that I have no wallet with me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's about the carefulness of things of life and it's about many things of my wife uh, tries for many years to so help me on that not yet at that time yeah the problem was that I was having in that wallet about 1750 euros that's more than 2300 Canadian dollars which is very big amount for a Romanian at that time, very complicated, but so the wallet was gone. I was supposed that night to uh, give that money to my father because he let me leave the money. I had some expenses to do, and I was supposed at the time to give him back. And I was prepared to do that. No wallet, no money. Finished. Yeah, I was starting to imagine how things should be. Yeah. Uh, dealt with in the next uh, part of my life to <laughs> solve the issue. Did you bring, then, did you bring I, the wallet with you there? The yeah, the, the wallet was with me. It was winter time in December. Uh, and uh, I was wearing my coat on my, on my arm because it was yeah, heat in the environment. Then I didn't need my, my coat on myself. And somehow it slept how do you call it? Slip, slip, yeah, from, uh, from my pocket. Okay, that was gone. I didn't see my, my father that night. I drove back home with my thinking, yeah, and the police caught me on the road for speeding. And then they were asking for the documents. Then I said, oh, so good that I would have the documents with me. I don't have any. Yeah. Finally, they understood. Probably I looked like somebody losing more than 2,000 Canadian dollars. And they believed me. They say, okay, we saw with the, with, with the fine, no fine for you today. But just from our heart of policemen to you, forget about. The one finding the thing will believe that uh, uh, Papa Noel uh, yeah, made the gift for them tonight and that's no problem. <laughs> So just, just forget, it says, okay, uh, your wife is still alive, you didn't burn the house, so don't, there was a good sermon for a minister here. 
And then, uh, yeah, I was thanking the Lord, thanking the Lord for the thing and taking my lessons with me. Yeah, and driving back home, yeah, with this heart. Then I arrived home, and that's about the kids. Now, please, who, who is five here? Who is five, five, five years old? Okay, you. Okay. Oh, there were several of them. Good. So my daughter, my daughter was five at that time, about five, not exactly. And, and she noticed that something happened with me. And then she asked straight, what happened? How to explain to the little daughter that, yeah, Papa is not very careful with things and uh, yeah. I said simply, look, I lost my wallet. There were a lot of money inside. I don't know how to solve it. It'll be complicated. To, yeah. Something for the five years old to hear. Then comes the strongest lesson. My daughter, looking into my eyes, was simply asking, and why are you not praying to the Lord Jesus? <laughs> For a servant of God to hear the solution was quite strong. How should I explain to her that the Lord is not so interested if I'm careless with my parents? At her age, I was doubting if she would understand that. And if I'm giving too long explanation, then she will understand simply that the Lord cannot solve all things only part of the things and it's bad lesson for a daddy to the, to the daughter then I said okay let's pray you will pray <laughs> then I was thinking if nothing happens then the little daughter didn't have faith <laughs> okay please don't don't uh, I, I hope nobody is uh, yeah <laughs> thank you you promise not to laugh on me today. But look simply like that. This is our, let's say our, not my pharisaical thinking. I'm amazed with myself. I'm not happy at all. But that was the truth. And please don't do the same. Yeah. And we prayed. My daughter prayed. Lord Jesus, please give back the money to my daddy. Amen. <laughs> Simple like that. And then she was happy. I was not. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Then I went to sleep. I couldn't sleep. I was praying. I took the books. No, not now for the parents. It's interesting what I read that night. I believe that if I wouldn't lose any wallet, I wouldn't understand the intent of what I read. It was quite strong things that the Lord wanted to share with me that time. Yeah, and maybe only in that frame of mind I could grasp the idea. They're quite happy for me to agree with you, my friends and my brethren here. Yeah, that's, you, you said an experience. That's an experience of myself years ago. Yeah. And next day, about 6 o'clock p.m., I have my wallet back. Because God is not playing with us. And if He somehow yeah, postpones things with the adults, never does He with the, kid, with the children. So, the five years old, never forget, the Lord Jesus loves you. And He knows any of your prayers. And he is answering to those prayers. So happy. So nice. I came back from the city because that family that found the thing. Next day, which means the day they bring me back, they tried to find my address. My yeah. And I was not living anymore at that address for years. And my father was not home. Then they were yeah, insisting. Some neighbors heard the noise. Then they were commenting. They say, no, uh, somebody lost some of the water. Oh, we can give him. No, you cannot because there's a lot of money in it. I have to give it personally, they said. And then they found out some relatives of ours that they called and they went, we established a place and a time. They killed about one day 
in the intention to give me back the thing exactly as I left. I, I lost it. And they were Catholics. We made new friends out of that. A miracle. It's too long to explain all the details. I was amazed <coughs> with that thing. Yeah. And then uh, I think a few days after, okay, that night I went home. And I look differently. It's interesting. We are not the same. It's depending on circumstances. That's bad for Christians. We have to be happy all the time, but okay. My daughter sized the thing and then asked ask me what happened. Then I showed the one. Imagine her jumping in the house. Yes, yeah, the Lord Jesus. That's the thing, brethren. And a few days after, police caught me speeding the new and was exactly the same people. Okay, I was not so bothered because I was not too much over the normal speed that I should drive. And, uh, okay, I should stay in my car, they should ride the thing. And, but they came quickly back and one, the one giving me back the document said, Okay, my colleague, it looks like he knows you, but you were supposed not to have these documents. How is that? Then I exit my car to speak with the police. People. And asked him, do you remember the last sentence when you explained to me how things are going on? And then he said, no, we just told you that it's impossible to find back the thing. And we are working with the thieves and with the law and so on. And so just forget, there was no, it's just not, not that was the last. The last one was only a miracle of God. But no, it's impossible and so on. Okay, here is the miracle of God. Then I explained for them how people found the thing, how they gave me back and so on. They were wondering, man, is that? Then I told them how my daughter prayed. Okay, then I went home, I took the desire of ages and the great conflict, the great controversy to books. And I went back on the street, find the car, it's against the law to give anything to the policeman, but I don't care about the law. In this context, I mean. But, so okay. um, and they understood there was no problem, there was no any anything against them. Finally, you can give a gift to whomever you want. Yeah. And they took the books, they promised to read. They were very impressed about the God we have and about the way he answers to prayers, especially for the little ones. And as well, even with having such children that myself, uh, uh, yeah, that it's, it's so nice to experience his hand in the little tiny things of life exactly the same way and he was in which he is helping in the big important uh, issues of life. So I uh, thank you for attention and I encourage all of you to believe him because in this way we can honor his name only. To believe him and to let him be the first in our life. Thank you and thank you. Thank you so much Brother Radu for this wonderful experience. Uh, once again, a lesson, how simple is the gospel, right? So I just want to read two verses for you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receive. And he that seek, find. And to him that knock, it shall be opened. This is the gospel, right? So simple. Sometimes we make it complicated. But it's, it's the children, five years old, they can understood, understand this. Just ask God. Just pray. And the, the problem is already solved. Thank you so much once again. I would like to invite here uh, Ina for the next item to be a song.
Thank you so much, Ina, for your wonderful song. Uh, I would like to invite here Oliver and Oscar. They have something for us, a poem. Jesus, gentle shepherd, bless thy land today. Keep me in thy footsteps, never let me stray. God, me through the daytime, every hour I pray. Keep my feet from straying from the narrow way. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. I'd like to invite Pendo right now for the next presentation. <coughs> so today we're going to be talking about men footsteps. So men footsteps, we mostly have our places in each footsteps. Some of us are in the beginning or the second and keep along. We can keep on seeing this type of, this type of people in our daily spaces life. Spiritually too is the same thing. But today we're gonna to be talking about a boy and the responsible responsibility of a boy in a in a Christian family. The greatest leader According with you, first for me, who's the greatest leader of all time? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. He's the greatest leader. And he says here, I am the I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, the good shepherd lays his life for his sheep. You know, if something doesn't belong to you, you don't really care about it that much. Every time, every time you will see it, you won't take good care of them. But Jesus, he's the best leader that we can have in our life. As a boy, we, we grew up with the examples of our family and the, the way they treat us in our family. We develop this type of character that help us in the future to be good priests, good um, missionary, good um, husbands in life, in, uh, in marriage. You can name it, and you will use exact the things that you have been practicing in your house, and the thing that those are the things that you're gonna bring in your marriage or in your house, and will be the things that you'll be using in your lifeline until the end of your life. Does age matter in this concept of faith and um, understanding the gospel? Does age matter in this something does age matter? Jack, what is it? Yeah, it matters. In this case, age doesn't matter. <laughs> age doesn't matter, but also we, we all always have to submit ourselves to our to the elders, to the people who's older than us, and to respect them. But we can be young, but our spiritual life is wise than us, and we can help other people. Just as much the old, old, older person can help the other ones. We, we can do it in a different ways, but as a boy, our responsibility is to help others understand God. We can do it at school or in our house or everywhere else. We practice this in our house, like taking care of the small stuff, of small meeting, meeting in the morning, taking care of the morning worship, and all this. He built our spiritual life to be a good priest of the house in the future. Remember. Now, things to remember is that sometimes life, it's not the, it doesn't go the way that you, you, you want it to go. Some, some things happen. In, in the Bible, if you believe in Christ, you have a new, you have a new, how can I say, a new identity or a new creation in, in Christ. But in that new creation, bad things can also happen. The thing that we have to remember is to not be attached to the world and not to be so much attached also to the flesh, because the flesh can always lie to us and 
not help us do the things that God want us, wants us to do. In Galatians 5, 13 to 14, life by the Spirit, you, brethren, you, my brother and sister, were called to be free. So you free, but do not use your freedom as to indulge the flesh, rather so serve one another, humble, humbly in love, for, in, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment, love your neighbors as yourself. So what, what is love? Because we, we can say we love our neighbors, but we don't understand the word love. So what is love? As a Christian, we should, be, we should know what's love. Because the, the word love, it needs to be repeated in the Bible concepts. So what's love? Perfection. Perfection? Never fail. Never fail. Okay. Affection. Affection. Perfection. Perfection. Perfection? Yeah. Perfection? Alright. So, God is love. God is love? It is. So, but what's the definition of love, the word love itself? Self sacrifice. It, it, yes, it's self sacrifice. Jesus, he was a good shepherd, as the, in the last um, chapter we saw, we saw, Jesus, he's a good shepherd. The good shepherd, you use the strength not for your benefit, but for the benefits of others. You use Jesus had strength to he could help himself. He could do a lot of a lot of stuff, but he used his strength for for who? For me and you to help us to grow. And he shows us how is to be a good leader is and what's loving your neighbor really mean. It's not buying them a Ferrari that you love, them, but it's helping them with the small stuff which helps them connect to Christ and show them that the kingdom of heaven it's near. It's actually near. You don't you don't have to to starve for it. It's so near that you can in some equation in I mean in some um, part of the Bible the heaven it's really it's really near. It's something that like it's in you. You can reach it and touch it. But you have to believe in order to do that. Galatians, <laughs> Ecclesiastes 11, 9. You are young. You who are young, be happy while you are young. And let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the way of your heart and whatever your, eye, your eyes see. But, so when there's a but, you know that there's another thing that comes up, which is really good. But, Know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So, do everything you want in the ways that you actually want. Like, do everything. But, in everything that you do, remember that God will bring you to judgment. So, there's something after that that's waiting for us. No matter how you live your life, you cannot escape this one. So, it's judgment, it will stay judgment. There will be the day of a judgment where everybody will have to present something they done with their lives. <clears throat> Don't forget to ask forgiveness. So forgiveness, it's something really good to ask, but sometimes we can, we can forget. But with this um, verse, Romans 4, chap, um, verse 7 to 8, he said, Bless those who are trans transgression? Transgression are forgiven. Those who those sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin whose sin the Lord will never count against. Them. So blessed is the man that if God doesn't count any sin on you, what does that mean? It means like you're spotless. You don't have sin on you. It means you're pure. You're good. And every Christian is like that. God accepts you no matter how you are. And He's ready to, to work with you no matter how you are. Just don't forget to ask forgiveness in everything that you do. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we do things, even the small problems, and you go home, you don't even remember about the small stuff. But when you pray, always remember to ask for forgiveness when you pray. So those small stuff can be also covered. This is actually an assurance. It's like 
buying a car and saying, I have a good assurance. In this case, if my car get broken, I can actually fix it with this assurance, right? This is the same thing. Your sin are forgiven. All you have to do is ask forgiveness. But do not use this verse as a way to commit sin over and over again, expecting them to be forgiven. Every good, so this is a, a way we have to say thank you to the Lord also. So every good, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light, who those are not changed, like shifts and shadows. Shadows. Yeah. My English is not very perfect. So hopefully you understand. So every good and every good gift is from where? From above. It's it's clear. Every good gift is from above. The good things that we have to remember is that every time you receive something good, remember to say thank you for the, to the Lord. Even if it's bad, sometimes we cannot really define what's bad. I'll tell you a story. It's really nice. So I I heard it somewhere. Someone was telling me about it. Is that there was a farmer, and this farmer had a um, had a horse, and this horse used to help them um, cultivate, cultivate, cultivate places, help him run around and for fun and all of those stuff for work. And then one day he was sleeping, the horse ran away, and then everybody in the, in the neighborhood came around him and said, "Hey, what happened?" We're really, really sorry for what happened to you. It's really bad. And then the um, farmer, the farmer looked at them and said, hmm, maybe. And then they left. And then tomorrow, the horse came back, but with other two wild horses. And then the neighbor, neighbors heard about that again. And they came back again and they say, man, this is so good. We heard, we heard what happened to you. It's really amazing. And then you look at them again and say, mm, maybe. And then the farmer kid, the son, wanted to start like training the other new horses that just came in. And then by accident, a big accident happened. The, the kid just fell, fell, on, fell on the ground. And the horse stepped on, him, on, him, on his leg. So he couldn't walk again. And then the, the neighbors heard about that again. They came and they said, we heard what happened, man. We're really sorry. And they look at them again and they said, mm, maybe. So then they believe in everything is bad. They say it's bad, everything. So the, the, the thing that the farmer is really desperate for those things. But the farmer, he, he was understanding. Like, he didn't know the full picture. So after, it was like, tomorrow they come. The military, they come take all the, the small kids, and they're like, okay, for the kids who can go to war, we're gonna take them. They took all the kids from the from the neighborhood, but they couldn't take that son because him, what happened to him? He was injured. He couldn't go to war with an injured leg. So he stayed home. And then the neighbors were so happy again, they said, Man, our son got drifted to the to, to war. We heard that your son stayed, and he was like, hmm, maybe. So, see, the thing about this story is that sometimes we cannot really tell what's bad and good. Sometimes bad stuff happens to us to help us, maybe to understand something, maybe to do something better, maybe something better is coming in the way. But in order, in order for that to happen, something bad that we think is bad must come in our life that we will feel that completely we're so empty and it's something that happened in our life and we think man this is completely bad so So, 
I wanted to ask you a question. How do you know what's bad? Because young kids and others, sometimes we, we struggle with this, right? We see our father is like, man, our father is the biggest hero in our house, in our, in our, in our room, in our house and family. And we're like, I want to be like my father. Why? Because like, sometimes we see the good quality with him and we want to be like him. We, he'll be like our big example in our family. And then after he'll teach us about Christ and all spiritual things, but all this from our Father coming down to us. And if our Father cannot give us those things that we need in our family, what happened? The kids will start for it. So I wanted to ask like the big the the fathers in, in the room right now, what what is defined good? So what's good? If we say God, it's, it's always like it's the, always the best answer. Like, once you say God, and if you're wrong, you say, "Well, I'm, I'm more holy than others." <laughs> but what's good? What's good and what's bad? Do we really understand what's bad and good? Can really someone say this is bad and good? But why? Why can't you tell? Because you cannot see the full picture of everything. You cannot see the ending of everything. You cannot see after. After that, so good. Only God who can say it's good, and God sees the full picture and says, "This is good for you, and this is bad for you." Because God, God Himself, He wants us to be perfect like Him Himself. So He made the Ten Commandments and the Bible to guide us to be good, to be perfect like Him. Now, being perfect does not mean that your heart, your Flesh will be happy and nothing will ever happen to you. Things will happen to you. Bad things even will happen to you. But it's always good to remember that God is with me. No matter what, no matter what the circumstance, He's with me. As a young kid, it's always good to remember also that. Especially the young kids. Because young kids, after they'll be good leaders in their families. And if a lady want to see who's a good boy, you know how to, you know how you do it? <laughs> it's weird. You know how to see if a boy is a good boy, like this boy, I can pass my life with him and it will be all right? It's to check what he does in his family. How he treats his mother, how he treats his sister. That's how we know this is a good boy. Not how he acts at school. He can act at school just to impress his friends. At work, the same thing, but at home, you natural, you know, my mom will not kick me out because I do this. He'll, she'll forgive me. In, I'm not saying do something so bad, mom's not forgiving. <laughs> but they'll, you'll be forgiven. No matter, no matter what the circumstance, your father is always open arm to forgive you. And young kids should always remember that, especially girls. This is a message for boys, but I'm telling for girls too that the good boys, to find them it's in their family, go visit their family and see how they are in, the, in their own family. The way they act, the way they treat their moms and all that. And that's how you're gonna know what's a good boy and what's a good leader of your family in the future. So I pray that each and every one of you will have a good husband in the future. Pray, like, I really hope, because like, if you have a bad husband, you'll be passing your hell on earth. It's true. You, your health will be starting on earth. I'm not married yet, but I've asked. Sometimes I ask Brother George too, and I ask him how is he with Vera, and he will explain to me how how it works, how is marriage, what's marriage about. And it's a good experience with them. But there's others that have bad experience. So please, choose a good husband in the future. So that's my hope and prayer for you that you'll have a blessed future with your husband. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Pendo, for your presentation. I'd like to invite you everybody to join with Sister Brianna and uh, already in Oscar for a song. for helping us to come.
here and uh, so we can fellowship with you and praise God and uh, we're really happy to be here. <laughs>
thank you so much. Thank you all of you. Thank you for your participation, for your attention. Praise uh, God for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, today we learn, we have learned that God is ready to give us a taste the heaven, right? And also we learn that Satan is there to uh, to do everything what he can to uh, destroy us, but also God is his love and he's ready to prepare, he's ready to give us a, a good life here and also to give us eternity. 